In the last video, we talked about how we can use volumes to mask out other volumes. So I wanted to continue on with this project file and just show you guys the other setups that I've made for the different use cases. So as I said in the last video, this project file will be available on Patreon for free. So if you guys want to take a look at the project files, go over all the different setups and learn how to do all these different things. I've got five different setups here that you can go over, then make sure to check that out in the link in the description for the Patreon. But I covered these first three in the first video. This, These last two I wanted to go over because they're pretty interesting use cases as well. I don't really see people using this a lot. So this fourth one here that we have, we have a height field and we can actually use the same technique to, uh, to mask out our height fields as well. So uh, if you don't know, Houdini has height fields, which are just essentially 2D volumes. You have our voxelized geometry here, uh, which stores the position. And then the second value of our two-dimensional height or two-dimensional volume is the height. So if we add in our height field noise, oh, it's storing a position and then the height of our height field at that position. So that's where the 2D volume comes in. So nothing special here, just a randomized uh, height field noise. And then I've got a giant sphere that I've pumped in here. And then we have our VDB from polygons. And again, it is a fog VDB that I'm just naming a mask. And those values go from zero to one on the outside, they are zero. On the very inside, the center, they are one. Let's keep that in mind as we jump in here to our height field VOP. So uh, height field VOP is literally just a volume VOP with a bind import of height and a bind export of height, both float values. So if we take our volume sample file, so I have actually three inputs for this. So I have our height field, our original height field, which is just this flat going on. I have our height field noise, which is gonna be our first input. A flat height field is our second input, and then our mask is the third input here. And I can, let me actually just rebuild this. So height field VOP. And I wanna do this just so it kind of makes sense of what we're doing. So provide the flat height field into the second and then the third height field into the last one here. So all I wanna do is take a mix node and I want to mix our, our flat height field, which we'll need to import. So our volume sample file wire in the second input because that's what we had as our input and then our sample position in there. Let's name our primitive name and then we want to make this uh, the same thing. So uh, this should be height, I think. And then we can wire that into our first input. Our second input, we will wire in the height from our noise up height field right here. And then we can wire this into our blend. And I think if we, nope, let's see, what did I do wrong? Height field, file, primitive name. Uh, that's right, I don't have this set. So if I take a look here now, we should see that we're now mixing between the two. So I wanna drive that mix with our third volume, which is the mass that we created. So let's go ahead and make a copy of this, just alt click and drag. And let's wire in our op input three. You can also just use the input, you know, second, third, fourth input, all those if you want. And with this one, we don't want the primitive name of height, we want the primitive name of mask. And we're gonna use that to drive the bias. And let's actually invert these. Oops. Let's invert that. So our noise in the first one, our flat height field into the second one. And it's not really super visible right now, but you can kind of see that it is starting to kind of smooth out that area. So if you take a multiply constant, as we talked about in the last video, we can start to affect the contrast of that mask. 
Let's just move that. And we also need to clamp this value because a mask is simply a value from zero to one. And we can start to crank up this value and you can see that we start to get that differentiation in how the, the contrast works. And again, we can set this, this object to be whatever we want. So if we wanted to drop down a mountain node in here, we can literally just drop in a mountain node and let's look at this. Let's crank up the amplitude and the size quite a bit. So we'll crank up the amplitude maybe to not that much, but like, I don't know, 40, 49. Sure, that works. So now if we take a look at our height field bop, you can see we get a different shape there. So we can use whatever shape we want and we can affect that contrast just very simply with a height field or with a multiply constant on our mask attribute there. So while this isn't necessarily something that you would probably use in most cases for a height field, it is something that you can do. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to delete that for now. Let's hop on over to our last example here. This one's pretty cool. So if I take a look here, we have this nice little morph effect going on. Whoops. Nice little morph effect going on between our pig head and our rubber toy geometry. So all I've done here is take our pig head and I am subdividing that out a couple of times and then turning that into a VDB. And again, we're naming the distance VDB to density. So we already have that in the volume VOP there. And then same thing with our test geometry, just moved it kind of into position, gave it the same size-ish. And again, same thing, fill interior density. And then we're mixing that with a volume VOP. And then I just have a box here for our mask with a match size to get us right down the center with a little bit of an offset just to uh, just to affect where it shows up. I'll kind of show you why that is offset here in a second. And again, fog VDB will name this mask or you can name it whatever you want as well. It just gives us zero to one values. So if we take a look at our volume VOP here, all I am doing is taking a mix we're taking in our second object, so our second um, volume, which is the density volume of our rubber toy here. And we are taking in our third input, which is our mask. So again, second input needs to be the second object. Our third input needs to be our mask here, just like we did with the height field. So then we're taking our mask, we're doing a multiply constant along with a clamp and we're wiring that up into the bias. And again, we can affect the contrast of this. So I can make this a super, super hard contrast. Whoops. Set this to like 10. Make this a super hard contrast or we can soften this up a little bit and give us a nice, easy, easy contrast there. Uh, and if I don't have this off, so that, that just gives us right down the middle, so offset change that back and if I crank up our multiplier here should have a pretty harsh line right there in the middle if it wants to stop going negative so you see we have a pretty much uh, very very harsh line right there in the middle obviously there's going to be a little bit of a discrepancy and like a it's not gonna be like a super super harsh line just because uh, it's got a blend between the values there and if we were to take this VDB, and actually this is something important to note here. Um, if you take this, so normally this is set to exterior band voxels, uh, not using world space. I uncheck this and I set this to the default value of three, we get this clipping. So if I take a look at, if I hit this little switch right here, which displays the primitive holes, you can see why we have that. So this is where our voxels are showing up. So it's going to have voxels around our first v our first volume. That's what it's going to, to voxelize here. So anything outside of this is going to be clipped, which if we look at our, actually let's do this, let's template that. So anything outside of these voxels is gonna be clipped. So you see it's nose is outside of these voxels. Up here it's outside as well as 
our fins. So that's all getting clipped off if you look here. So everything outside of that is getting clipped. So that's why we set this to exterior to, to, to use the world space just to give us a good value. And I set this to, what did I set to one? Yeah. That just makes uh, basically a, a giant volume around our object, our voxelized volume, that allows us to not have this clipped off so that we can get this a nice blend between the objects. So make sure that you have enough voxels on the exterior band and you should be all set with your geometry. Just don't go too high because it that does affect the time it takes to calculate uh, the, the volume there. And then you can just convert it back if you want. Let's go ahead and just set this back to negative uh, 0.3 and we'll put this constant back down to like 3 just to give us a nice nice smooth fall off there. But anyways that is the gist of how you can go about masking off volumes using other volumes. Uh, key notes to take away just to make sure that you have the the masking geometry set to VDB from polygons with a fog VDB and again that is going to be a a zero to one value so you may need to adjust the contrast using some multiple I constants and some clamps that can help you really dial in the look to your mask. But anyways if you want to learn more about Houdini or if actually first if you want this project file as I said in the start this project file is going to be on my Patreon for free, so you can grab that on there um, and go through all the different setups, see all the different settings that I use, and get it there. But uh, if you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check out the other videos on my channel. I have a bunch of other stuff on Houdini uh, covering a wide range of topics, so if you're interested in that, make sure to check out those videos. But anyways, thank you guys for watching, and have a good day.